Hello and welcome to Tech with Jaspal. This is part one of the AGR Administrator Exam Practice Question Series, where we are going to go through questions on AGR Policy, AGR Monitor, and AGR Storage Account. So stay till the end to make the most out of this video. First question of the series, friends. Your company intends to migrate an entire solution to AGR. Due to security constraints, it is essential to restrict the creation of all resources to a specific region. Which Azure service should you use to achieve this requirement? And your options are Azure Monitor, Azure Policy, Azure Web Apps, Azure Availability Zone. Folks, the correct answer here is option B, Azure Policy. Common use cases for Azure Policy include implementing governance for resource consistency, regulatory compliance, security, cost, and management. Now, some of the common examples can be restrict resource regions, which is what is being asked in the question. You can even block certain resource types or restrict VM sizes. Next question. You have an Azure policy as shown in the following exhibit. What is the effect of the policy? And your options are, you are prevented from creating Azure SQL servers in Cloud Shell 1407 only. You can create Azure SQL servers in any resource group within Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. You can create Azure SQL servers in Cloud Shell 1407 only. You are prevented from creating Azure SQL servers anywhere in the Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. Folks, let's try to read the policy from top to bottom. Firstly, scope defines which level is the policy applied at. And in this case, it is applied at subscription level. And the name of the subscription is Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. Now, next is the exclusion section, and you can see Cloud Shell 1407 is exempted. So everything under subscription will need to adhere to this policy, except Cloud Shell 1407 resource group. Next is the policy definition where certain resource types are not allowed to be created. And finally, the parameter says the resource type which is not allowed is Microsoft SQL Server. So if I sum up whatever I just said, then it means you cannot create resource type SQL servers in subscription except Cloud Shell 1407. And if we rephrase this statement, then it means you can create SQL servers in Cloud Shell 1407 only, which is the right answer here, which is option C. Friends, if you still have any doubts in reading this policy, then post it in the comment section and I will address it as soon as possible. Third question, you manage an Azure solution that is currently experiencing performance issues. Which of the following tools should you use to identify the cause of performance issues pertaining to metrics on the Azure infrastructure? Your options are Azure Activity Log, Azure Monitor, Azure Advisor, Azure Traffic Analytics. And friends, the correct answer is option B, Azure Monitor. It helps you gain insights into the performance and availability of your applications and resources by collecting data from various sources, including metrics, logs, and activity data. Let's now look at why other options are not right. Azure Activity Log provides information about operations performed on resources in your subscription. Azure Advisor provides best practice recommendations for improving the performance, security, and reliability of your Azure resources. And Azure Traffic Analytics is more focused on analyzing network traffic patterns. Let's look at next question, folks. You have an Azure subscription with a virtual network named VNet1, which uses two express route circuits to connect to two separate on-premise data centers. What should you use to create a dashboard displaying detailed metrics and a visual representation of the network topology? Your options are Azure Virtual Network Watcher, Data Collection Rule, Azure Monitor Network Insights, and Log Analytics. Friends, the most appropriate choice for this use case would be option C, Azure Monitor Network Insights. As it provides a comprehensive solution for monitoring and troubleshooting network performance in Azure, it collects and displays metrics related to network performance, such as bandwidth usage, latency, and packet loss. 
It also provides a graphical view of the network topology showing the relationship and dependencies between various network components. And finally, it combines data from various sources such as Network Watcher and Express Route to give a unified view of network health and performance. If you are liking the content, friends, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe the channel. As a reminder, if you are interested in obtaining the complete set of questions in PDF format, remember to take the gold membership of the channel and email me at devopshub2023 at gmail.com requesting a PDF copy. Fifth question of the series, folks. You have an Azure subscription with virtual machines connected to a virtual network named VNet1. You plan to configure Azure Monitor for VM Insights. What should you create first to ensure that all virtual machines communicate with Azure Monitor only through VNet1? And your options are an Azure Monitor private link scope, a private endpoint, a log analytics workspace, a data collection rule. And friends, the correct answer is option A, an Azure Monitor private link scope. An Azure Monitor private link connects a private endpoint to a set of Azure Monitor resources to define the boundaries of your monitoring network. That set is called as Azure Monitor private link scope. Next question, friends. You have an Azure subscription with a storage account named Storage1 located in the North Europe Azure region. To ensure that a secondary copy of blob data is automatically created in the East US region when data is added to storage one, while minimizing administrative effort, what should you configure? Your options are geo-redundant storage, object replication, operational backup, a lifecycle management rule. And folks, the correct answer here is object replication. You might be tempted to choose GRS here, but friends, it doesn't give you option to choose the destination region location. Rather, the copy in GRS happens to the dedicated region pair of the source region. So folks, with this, let's head to Azure portal to validate the answer that we have chosen. So friends, we are now in Azure portal to mimic the scenario. I have already created two storage accounts out of which one will act as a source storage account and the other will act as a destination storage account to configure object replication. Now in our question, the storage account name was storage one, but obviously I cannot use it because the storage account names are globally unique and storage one is already used. So I've created the accounts with the name of storage 1963 and storage 3009. Storage 1963 is in East US location and storage 3009 is in North Europe location. So based on our question statement, we are going to use storage 3009 because that's the one which is hosted in North Europe region. So friends, what we are going to do is if you scroll down in the left hand menu, you will see that there is an option in data management, which is called as object replication. Now let's open this menu and try to configure a replication rule, which says create a replication rule. Uh, now, since we have chosen storage 3009 as our source storage account, it will only give us an option to choose the destination storage account where you want to replicate your um, objects to. So friends, we are going to choose the storage 1963, which is the one which is created in East US region. And then we have to choose the source container and the destination container. So before, when I was preparing for this demonstration, I created source container uh, in the um, in the source uh, storage account, which we have chosen. And I also created a destination container in the destination storage account, which we have chosen. So that's what I have already selected them. And now we will just click create. So it is going to uh, create the replication policy and replication rules. You can see it's pretty quick because currently the storage accounts are empty and the uh, replication rule has got created. So what we are going to do is, as you can see, the destination account is 1963, source container is container 3009, and the destination container is 1963. So friends, if I go back, uh, let me just show you the current state of our containers to ensure there is nothing uploaded in them at the moment. Uh, this is the container which has got loaded and you can see container 3009 is currently empty. Let's go back and check the other container as well to ensure that's also empty. 
So we are now in the container section, container 1963, which you can see or is also empty. Now, because the, uh, the other container is in East US region, so let's try to upload something into uh, the North Europe storage account container and see whether it gets replicated to uh, the other side or not. So friends, let's try to upload a dummy pic. We just click open and then the upload option has got enabled. Let's hit upload and the blob has successfully got uploaded here in our source container, which was container 3009. Let's head to our destination container and see whether it has got replicated or not. It can take some time to replicate, but let's give it a try whether it has already replicated or not and you can see it has still not got replicated so let's try to give it few minutes i would say probably i'll pause the video here and i'll come back as soon as the replication has happened so friends it took it almost three minutes for it to get replicated from the source con container to the destination container so friends it took about three minutes for it to get replicated from the source container to the destination container but the bottom line is it has got replicated and that is what we were trying to achieve question number seven folks you have an azure storage account named storage one and plan to use az copy to transfer data to storage one which storage services can you copy data to using az copy and your options are file only file and table only blob and file only blob table and queue only blob file table and queue folks az copy is a command line utility that you can use to copy blobs or files to or from a storage account if you are using the latest and supported version 10 of az copy then you can only copy files and blobs however if you are using an older version of az copy then you can copy data from table storage as well but remember, older version is deprecated and not supported by Microsoft anymore, which is why I have chosen option C as the correct answer, which is blob and file only. If you are interested in understanding more about how AZ copy version 10 works, then there is a link on your screen. Go through the link and read more about it. That's all for this part of the series, friends. We will be releasing more parts pretty soon. So do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you are up to date on when the next video is released.